Hi everyone, my name is Dr Matt Williams. I'm a tutor in politics and what's known as the Access Fellow here at Jesus College at the University of Oxford. Jesus College is one of 39 colleges that make up Oxford. I've been involved in admissions at Oxford for over 10 years and what I'm showing you in the background behind me are images of a new building that we've, we've put up in the college. And to put up the building, there had to be a lot of digging. And it reminded me of a past Oxford interview question that we've used for admissions here at the university, which is as follows. If you had to bury a time capsule, what would you put in it? If you had to bury a time capsule, what would you put in it? Now, this is a really good question because it gauges your abilities at one of the most fundamental skills of any student in any discipline. And that is what's known as critical analysis. Now, critical analysis is kind of a fancy way of describing an argument, but it actually is a lot more helpful than an argument because it really tells you what's going on. So let me break it down. Analysis is where you take a puzzle and you break it into pieces, you deconstruct it like a furious kitten with a ball of yarn. And the critical part is when you build it back up again, you come up with a solution to the problem and you critically evaluate better and worse solutions to the same problem. So that's critical analysis. So let's come back to the question. If you had to bury a time capsule, what would you put in it? Well, let's start with the analysis. Let's start with the deconstruction. This is how an interview would typically start, is that you and the interviewer would break down the big question into lots of smaller questions. So if you want to anticipate what an interviewer will ask, well, start to think about the what's, the why's, the who's, the how's, and so on. So, you know, what is a time capsule? You might agree on a definition along the lines of, it's a container with things in it that are meant to be discovered either accidentally or it deliberately at a particular point in time in the future and those things inside of it tell a story they tell something about our times to future generations something like that so that's the what but then you've also got to think about who who's this for you know which future generations do you want to be discovered by accident when someone just digs it up or do you want it to be sort of intentionally exhumed on a particular date you know who's your audience for this time capsule how do you want it to be discovered? What items are gonna go in there? What sort of reaction do you want from those future generations when they dig up your time capsule? So that's analysis. You're, you're asking lots of little questions. In a way, and this is a theme that I've come back to several times on this channel, you need to behave a little bit like a young child, like a toddler, really curious, asking loads of questions. Why is the sky blue? What's going on? What do you mean? Those sorts of things. Basically, an Oxford interview is kind of like a conversation between two children. What does that mean? What are you talking about? I don't understand right <laughs> so that's the analysis there you've broken down you've deconstructed the puzzle now let's build it back up again let's try and come up with a critical assessment of better or worse solutions so my argument might be along these lines well i think a time capsule ought to contain sort of artifacts of the present day that are very unlikely to be accessible elsewhere otherwise it's kind of a redundant medium right there's not much point in putting for example lots of hard drives in a time capsule that contain lots of computer data because those data are likely to be found elsewhere. Now they may not be, of course, so you know you could argue that actually a hard drive will be the best thing to put in a time capsule. But I also think time capsules tend to be a bit more whimsical, a bit more sort of fun and interesting. So putting in a hard drive wouldn't necessarily fit with most people's conception of a time capsule. That would be sort of, you know, storing crucial data for future generations to, to find and it wouldn't really be a time capsule. Similarly, I'm not sure putting newspapers in would be particularly helpful because newspapers are likely to be found in other sources. So you want something that's relatively unique in your time capsule. So I would probably put all of my most crucial personal effects. I would put my keys, I would put my phone, I would put my wallet. It would, be, it would render me sort of vulnerable for a few days. <laughs> but the reason I would do that is because I'm pretty confident that within about 10 years, at least, those items will become to a greater or less, lesser extent obsolete. The technology will have replaced most of them. You know, a lot of our interactions with technology will become through our voices, through our fingertips, through our eyes and through our faces and things like that. I don't think we'll have many tangible day-to-day -day essential items anymore in the future. So I think it'll be quite interesting to people of my great grandchildren's generation to look on these items and basically try and work out why, why did they need this stuff? And that's kind of, the, the beauty of a time capsule is that it provides some useful artifacts that probably people won't be able to find very easily elsewhere, where they can get a good insight into what was essential to people like me. Anyway, that would be my argument. 
me and the interviewer, if I was the interviewee, would go back and forward with it. And that's critical analysis, that's critical thinking. So to practice it, behave like a furious kitten or a toddler, pulling apart the problem, deconstructing it, and then reconstruct an argument based off those mini questions that you came up with in the analytical phase. Have a practice, get used to sort of thinking out loud, very good practice for an interview, see what you come up with. And of course, as ever, let us know in the comments below what your answer to this question would be. Thanks so much for watching. All the best. Bye now.